And it's your voice, your vote. El Paso wins and the rest of Texas, plus 13 other states. They're all voting today in the primary elections. A third of the delegates are up for grabs. So it's a key date for the Democrats running for president. Joe Biden got a big boost yesterday with several former candidates announcing their endorsement of him. They were former El Paso Congressman Beto O'Rourke, who dropped out in the race in November. Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar also, who announced the ending of their campaigns over the past two days. And it's a team up that could help Biden against Bernie Sanders. Sanders has been leading the national polls in most states that are voting today, but Biden is a close second. We'll find out today if his new endorsements will help him against Sanders. And while the voting good is going on now, let's get a look at the results of early voting in El Paso. There's a live look for us there going on. Uh, there's those early votes. 470,000 registered voters in El Paso, 33,000 voted early during the last two weeks of February. Now, numbers on who they voted for have not been released yet. Now, we normally find out that information a little bit later on tonight. And polls are open. You just saw that live look. Let's take a look back. We got a nice zoom in right there. Uh, many people still campaigning. You could see them holding signs and throughout the country. The polls open just about five hours ago at 7 o'clock in the morning. They'll be open until 7 o'clock tonight, so you still have plenty of time to head out. You will need a valid form of ID in order to do so, and this is one of the many polling sites throughout the county. You can always go over to KVIA.com. You can read that voting guide for today's primary election with all those polling sites and a list of forms of ID that are acceptable. Thank you, Nicole, and why we have the rain here in the border land deadly tornadoes at least two touched down early this morning in central Tennessee the latest number showing 22 people dead now most of that damage was reported near downtown Nashville and local officials say they've responded to at least 40 building collapses around the city there's some drone footage from earlier today heavily damaged buildings there have also been numerous reports you can see roofs blown off buildings along with gas leaks power outages and flashes of electrical equipment from the lightning up in the sky significant damage also reported at the john toon airport there in West Nashville. In our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom, learn new information about a shooting that happened in Las Cruces. We've learned that victim was a 17-year-old boy and was flown to a hospital here in El Paso. Now, police say the boy was shot in the back. It happened around 9 o'clock at the Henry Benavidez Center on McClure Road. That was just a few blocks from Mayfield High School. Police say the boy was conscious and talking with them. The department told ABC7 no arrests have been made. There were no immediate suspects in that shooting. Now welcome back to ABC 7 at noon. After becoming the NBA's most improved player last season, winning an NBA championship to boot, Pascal Siakam has thrived for the Toronto Raptors. And this after, of course, his stint over at New Mexico State. ABC 7's Nate Ryan, he is in Phoenix, Arizona right now where the Raptors will take on the Suns. And Nate, it's looking good out there. And we are in that ABC 7 alert center right now with breaking news. Police have now said the pedestrian who died overnight after being hit by a car in the Northeast is a man and they have identified that driver, 23-year-old Mario Avalas Alamo. It happened around 10 o'clock on Dyer. That's near Grouse Road, and that's a few blocks north of Trans Mountain. And police say the victim was riding a skateboard in the northbound lanes of Dyer when he was hit by Alamo's car in the left lane. Now, the victim died at the scene. A passenger in that car, 20-year-old Randy Cano, was injured and taken to the hospital. Police have not said if Alamo will face any charges, but police have not identified that victim. But as soon as ABC7 learns any new information about that investigation, we'll let you know on air and online at kvia.com. And the big statewide race happening today is for the U.S. Senator. Now, current Senator John Cornyn has held that seat since 2000. Two. He's facing Republican opposition, and 12 Democrats are also vying for that nominee. And also up for grabs is that Texas House of Representatives seat for District 76. Former city rep Democrat Claudia Ordaz Perez is facing off against political newcomer Democrat Elisa Tamayo. The race for sheriff pits incumbent Democrat Richard Wiles against three other Democrat contenders. And another big local race to watch is for County Commissioner of District 3, a Precinct 3, rather. Vince Perez is the uncovered and is facing off against three Democrats in that seat as well. Switching gears now, in a bid to keep college accessible, the University of Houston is going to waive tuition and mandatory fees for students with family incomes of $65,000 or less. Now, tuition at UH costs anywhere from $5,000 to $7,000 per term, depending on their area of study. 
Well, that number goes up with mandatory fees, which vary. The program does not cover books or room and board, and the news comes weeks after the University of Southern California has made a similar move. Let's take a live look outside US 54 and Dyer, and it still looks like those southbound lanes on 54 are still not open yet this afternoon. We'll continue to monitor that road for you. Of course, you can get that live look anytime. Head over to KVIA.com. Click on that traffic tab. Welcome back into ABC 7. We do have breaking news. The seventh coronavirus death in the United States has just been confirmed. It again happened in Washington State. Now, this latest case actually happened last week, but it wasn't was not tied until the virus until now. All cases of deaths have occurred in Washington State and all but two of those victims were residents of a nursing home in suburban Seattle. The number of cases in the United States overall climbed past 100, scattered across at least 14 states with nearly 20 now in Washington State. We'll continue to monitor this situation. You can get the latest online at kvia.com. Madeline? Up in the distance, I, I think mean, that's a raindrop there too to go on the camera. It's tough, maybe in that top oh, right corner. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, let's Ooh. take you out to the radar show you. I mean, it's definitely coming our way. Be careful. Download the app. I'll be here for about an hour tracking these storms.